One afternoon, Miffy and Melanie were playing in Miffy's garden. I will pretend to be a princess, said Miffy, and you can pretend to be the queen, Melanie. That will be fun, said Melanie. It was good fun. Princess Miffy and the good Queen Melanie had a lovely afternoon. Melanie! Miffy! called Mother Bunny out of the window. Come in now. It's time to go to bed. Soon Miffy and Melanie were tucked into their beds. Would you girls like me to read you a bedtime story? said Miffy's mother. Oh yes, please read us a story, said Miffy and Melanie. Here is a nice story about a princess and a queen. Would you like to hear it? asked Miffy's mother. Miffy and Melanie laughed. They thought it was funny that Miffy's mother had found a story that was just the same as the one they had played in the garden. It was a wonderful story. And both little girls listened with wide eyes to every word. When she finished reading the story, Mother Bunny turned out the lights and said, Sleep well, little ones. Tomorrow is another day. When it was dark, Melanie whispered to Miffy, That was a wonderful story. Wouldn't it be good if we could read another one? Miffy turned on her bedside lamp. She took another book from her shelf. Can you read it, Melanie? asked Miffy. Girls, girls, you're supposed to be sleeping, Mother Bunny said. When the lights were out again, Melanie whispered very softly to Miffy. I can't read yet, Miffy. I wish I could. Me too, whispered Miffy. Soon the little girls fell asleep. And before they knew it, it was morning. Wake up! Wake up, Melanie and Miffy. It's time to get up and go to school. At school, the teacher asked the class, Do you like stories, children? Would you like to be able to read them yourselves? Miffy and Melanie looked at each other. That's just what we would like, whispered Miffy to Melanie. All that day, the children began to learn how to read letters and words. It was very exciting. At the end of the afternoon, the teacher said, I have a nice storybook here. Who would like to read a few words from it? Miffy and Melanie looked at each other again. They were so surprised to see that it was the very same book Miffy's mother had read to them. Both girls raised their hands. The teacher picked Miffy and handed her the book. Miffy started to read. Once upon a time, there was a lovely princess. The teacher was surprised that Miffy read so well. You've learnt to read very quickly, Miffy, she said. I know this story by heart. One day, when it was too rainy to go outside, Miffy's mother said, This is a good day to paint your room, Miffy. It hasn't been painted in a very long time. What a good idea, said Miffy. Can I help? Yes, said Father Bunny. But first we must take everything out of your room. Miffy said, I have lots of pictures on the wall. I have my cupboard and my bed and my shelf. Can't we just paint around them? That won't do at all, said Miffy's mother. We must take everything out of the room so we can paint the walls evenly. Very well, said Miffy. I will help. 
first I will take all of my pictures off the wall. But I can't move my bed, or the cupboard, or the shelf. Your mother and I will move the heavy things, Miffy. You can think of what colour you would like to paint your room. I have lots of different coloured paints in my workshop. So while her mother and father were carrying everything out of her room, Miffy began to think about what colour she would like her room to be. If it were blue, it might seem like it's always night time, she said. If it were red, it might look too hot. If it were green, it might look like my room was outside in the garden. If it were white, it would be the same colour as me and I might feel lost inside it. Miffy looked out of her window and noticed a bright yellow tulip. If my room were yellow like that tulip, it would be sunny and bright. I would like my room to be yellow, said Miffy finally. Father Bunny said, I have some lovely yellow paint. I will paint the high parts of the wall, Miffy, and you can paint the low parts. You will be able to learn how to paint. Mother said, first you must put on an apron, Miffy. It would be a pity to get paint on your lovely dress. So Miffy put on an apron and her father very carefully mixed the bright yellow paint. He took a big brush and he gave Miffy a small brush. Then they set to work. Miffy, said Father Bunny, try to paint up and down in the same direction. Like this. Miffy learnt very quickly. Soon the room was a lovely happy yellow colour. And Miffy's things were soon back in their place. Miffy felt happy too. Her room felt fresh, bright and clean. It's a nice feeling, she said, to have a freshly painted room and that I helped to do it. Boris and Barbara were thinking about Miffy's birthday. What can we make for her? asked Barbara. Well, said Boris, spring will soon be here and I know that Miffy enjoys seeing the baby birds every year. What if I make her a special birdhouse that she can watch each day? Oh, that's a splendid idea, Boris, said Barbara. It should be painted brightly to attract a mother bird. I will make it an exact copy of Miffy's own house, only very small, just the right size for little birds. I have a picture of Miffy's house to guide me. Boris selected some of his best wooden planks, some pieces that would make the walls, a strong piece of wood for the floor and two sturdy pieces for the roof. First he drew a plan that showed the right sizes of wood and how they would all be fitted and nailed together. Then Boris measured a piece of wood with his special ruler and used a pencil to mark where the plank should be cut. He clamped the wood to his workbench so it would be held steady. And then he took out one of his sharp saws. 
He moved the saw back and forth over the line he had drawn with the pencil. He did this for each piece of wood until every part of the birdhouse was cut to the right size. Next, he used a hammer to fasten all the pieces together. Finally, there was a perfect little house. I will use my drill to make a little hole in the house just big enough for the mother bird to get in and out. She will collect twigs and grass to make a cosy nest inside. Now it's ready for you to paint it, Barbara, said Boris. Barbara Bear had lots of jars of bright paint and a brush for each colour. Soon the little birdhouse really did look like a tiny model of Miffy's own house, with one small difference. On Miffy's birthday, Boris and Barbara brought the birdhouse to Miffy's house and set it up on a pole in Miffy's garden. Birthday, Miffy, said Boris and Barbara. We have a surprise for you. Come and see. Miffy was delighted with her birdhouse. It looks just like my house, said Miffy. But there's something different. Instead of a door, it has only that little hole in the front. That's a door for birds, said Boris. It's not a bunny door. They all laughed. Oh, how wonderful to have such clever friends, said Miffy. You have made me happy. And your present will also make a mother bird very happy. Now we all have something to be happy about. Miffy read that in some fairy tales, a fairy could give you three wishes. She wondered what she would wish for if a fairy granted her three wishes. My first wish would be that my mother and father would love me forever, she said. But she already knew that her mother and father would love her forever. So she tried to think of another wish. She decided to go for a walk. She was sure that she could think better while she was walking. There was Snuffy, who was, as always, very happy to see Miffy. Do you want to come along with me? asked Miffy. While they were outside walking, Miffy and Snuffy met Aggie, who had her arm in a sling. Hello, Aggie, said Miffy. What happened to your arm? I fell down while I was roller skating, said Aggie, and I hurt it. I wish that your arm gets better soon, said Miffy. Thank you, Miffy, said Aggie. That was Miffy's first wish. If my wish is magic, Aggie's arm will be better tomorrow she thought as she waved goodbye to her friend. As Miffy and Snuffy walked towards the forest, it began to rain. Miffy hadn't remembered to take an umbrella on her walk. Oh dear, said Miffy. I wish it would never rain and always be sunny. Miffy was surprised when it quickly stopped raining and the sun came out. I've wasted my second wish, she said. If there is only sunshine and no rain, the trees won't grow. Now she had only one wish left. My last wish would be for something very nice, she said to Snuffy. Miffy thought and thought as she walked along, 
looking around and trying to think of something important to wish for. She walked through a field full of flowers. Miffy thought about her mother and wanted to pick some flowers to bring home to her. But my mother likes yellow flowers best, she told Snuffy. I see lots of red flowers and lots of blue flowers. Shall I use my last wish to find some yellow flowers? Just around the bend, there was a whole field of lovely yellow flowers. Now I can use my last wish for something else, said Miffy. I will wish for an ice cream. Miffy picked a lovely bunch of flowers for her mother. Having three wishes is a wonderful thing, said Miffy as they began walking home. When Miffy gave Mother Bunny the bunch of yellow flowers, she was very happy. Oh, Miffy, she said, these are lovely. They are my favourite yellow flowers. I saved my last wish for a nice ice cream, said Miffy. Do you know what I wish for? I wish that my little Miffy will always be just as sweet as she is now. And she gave Miffy a big, squeezy bunny hug. Then Mother Bunny went into the kitchen and gave Snuffy a nice bowl of fresh water and Miffy and ice cream. Holiday time had arrived. When the school term was over, Miffy and her mother and Father Bunny were ready to go on their holiday. Miffy looked at a map so that she could see where they were going. One year they went to the seashore. This year they would go to the mountains. Mother Bunny said, we must pack our warm clothes. Why is that, Mother? asked Miffy. It's summertime. You will see, Miffy. Perhaps you will be surprised. Father Bunny made sure their car was safe for the long mountain trip. Off they went. Over beautiful hills, through the woods, and then up into the mountains. Miffy noticed that as they got higher, it became colder. When they stopped to look out at a wonderful view, they all put on their warm clothes. As they drove even higher, Miffy started to see patches of snow on the ground. That's strange, said Miffy. Snow in summertime? Now do you see, Miffy? The higher in the mountains you are, the colder it is. On some very high mountains, there is snow all year long, said Mother Bunny. When they arrived at the very top of the mountain, there was snow everywhere. Can we play with the snow? Like in winter time? asked Miffy. Well, why don't we find out? said Father Bunny. Miffy and her parents made a snowman. Then they had fun throwing snowballs. Soon it was time to go back down the mountain again. As they drove lower and lower, it began to get warmer again. Finally they arrived at the shore of a beautiful lake. Here is where we will spend our holiday, said Mother Bunny. Look, Miffy, there's something waiting for you. Another surprise, 
shouted Miffy. First the snow, and now the boat! What a wonderful holiday! As her mother started to make preparations for their camping site, Miffy and her father went to the boat. They climbed into the boat and went off for a nice boat trip around the lake. When they returned, Miffy saw that Mother Bunny had made a campfire and a delicious picnic supper. This really is a wonderful holiday! Puck 